My name is George. I'm the founder of 1600.io. I have a math degree from Yale. Let's see how fast we can do module one of the first digital practice test. Frequency table. There's four fours here, four fours, okay, A and B check out. And then there's three eights, frequency three, eight. The answer is gonna be A, B's wrong. Uh, which expression is equivalent to this? We have to factor this. All the answers are in factored form. Two numbers that multiply to negative 40 add to three are gonna be equal to positive eight and uh, minus five. So X minus five, X plus eight. That's B. Jay walks at a speed of three miles per hour, runs at a speed of five miles per hour. He walks for W hours, runs for R hours, combined total of 14 miles. So if you're walk, uh, walking three miles per hour times W hours walking, that's gonna be the total miles you walked. Uh, then there's gonna be five miles per hour running times R uh, hours ran, run, ran, <laughs> equals 14 miles. So this is gonna be uh, our equation, A. In triangle ABC, measure B is 52, C is 17, A. Um, th three angles of a triangle have to add up to 180 degrees. So 52 plus 17 is gonna be 69, plus uh, A equals 180, so A equals 111, D. The graph represents total charge in dollars, electrician, X hours of work, okay? Electrician, one-time fee, that's the y-intercept, plus an hourly rate, slope. What's the best interpretation of the slope? Slope is the hourly rate. Change in y over change in x. Change in dollars over change in time, slope, hourly rate. How much money we're getting per additional hour. Table distribution and shape, 100 tiles. If one of the tiles, one of all the tiles is selected at random, out of all 100 tiles, what's the probability of selecting a red tile? Uh, there's 30 total red tiles, so 30 over 100, 0.3, whatever. From a population of 50,000 people, 1,000 were chosen at random, surveyed. Based on the survey, 35% supported, margin of error 3%. That means that as high as 38% of the, of the people in the population will support it and as low as 32% will support it. So when they're asking, what is a plausible value for the total people in the population out of 50,000 who support it? We just need to find 38% of 50,000 and 32% of 50,000. 38% of 50,000 is 19,000. 32% of 50,000 is 16,000. So any number between these, and the only one to see. Uh, 55 over x plus 6 equals x. Multiply both sides by x plus 6. So we have 55 equals x squared plus 6x. And let's subtract the 55 from both sides while we're at it. So now we have a nice quadratic. We factor it. Um, two numbers multiplied in negative 55 add the 6 are going to be x plus 11 and x minus 5. The only positive solution here is going to be x equals 5. Uh, an airplane descends from an altitude of 9,500 feet to 5,000 feet at a constant rate of 4,000 feet per minute. Type of function. Is it exponential or linear? It's linear. We're decreasing at a constant rate. That's a hallmark quality of a line. And we're obviously decreasing because we go from 9,500 to 5,000. We're decreasing linearly in this relationship. Given function, exponential, uh, what is the y-intercept? Y-intercept is going to be 11. So the only answer here is going to be A. Um, that is the y-intercept. But you could plug in uh, x, uh, x equals 0. Y-intercept is the y-value when x equals 0. 112 to the 0 power is 1. 1 times 11 is 11. Circle shown, center O, circumference 144. Diameter P, R, and Q, S. Okay, so we know O is the center. We know these are all radii. Whatever. The length of arc P, S is twice the length of arc P, Q. So that means that if P, Q is X, P, S is going to be 2X because it's twice the length. And because we know that these are all vertical, we know that uh, SR is gonna be X and we know that RQ is gonna be two X proportionally. So what's the length of arc QR if they tell us the whole circumference is 144? Well, uh, two X is going to be the proportion of QR out of the total of the circles, X plus two X plus X plus two X is six X. So that means that one third of the circle is QR. So one third of the circumference therefore is gonna be QR. One third of 144 is gonna be uh, 72, uh, 48 uh, pi. A rectangle has a length of x units and a width of x plus 15. So we know that length times width equals 76 um, total square units. So x times x minus 15. So x squared minus 15x equals 76. Subtract 76 from both sides. Minus 76 equals 0. We can factor this. Two numbers multiply to negative 76 add up to negative 15. Uh, x minus 19 and x plus 4. So what's the value of x that's positive? 19. Here we have some relationship. I notice all the answer choices are in, uh, in exponential form. Um, you're making deposits, uh, blah, 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 exponential relationship. There's only one answer choice that has a y-intercept of 604, and it's going to be C. There's only one value that when we have x equal, or t equals 0, the y value is going to be 604. That's C. At how many points of the graph the equation this and this intersect? So, so these two graphs are two lines and that have different slopes. Two lines that have different slopes intersect once. There we go. Uh, so we have this linear relationship here in standard form. School fair tokens, one student, one G green tokens, R red tokens worth a total of 380 points. So if G and R represent the number of tokens, that means that 5 and 45 represent the number of points per token. 
So when they're asking how many more points is a red token worth than a green token, a red token is 45, a green token is five, 40. That's our answer. The number of bacteria in a liquid doubles every day. So 44,000, so our y-intercept is 44,000. We start with this times, what are we doing? We're multiplying by two every T days. That's gonna be T days, that's gonna be D. Uh, a cylinder is a diameter of eight, height of 12. Uh, what is the volume? Volume of a cylinder is gonna be pi r squared times h, the area of the base times h. So if the diameter is eight, that means the radius is four. So pi times four squared times 12 is gonna be, uh, 16 times 12 is gonna be 192. Uh, so we have a system here. What is the value of y? So we have to cancel out x. So I, I, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna solve for y. I'm gonna multiply the second equation by negative three. That means that we're gonna get negative six x minus six y equals negative 30. So I just rewrote the second equation. If we add the two, the first equation and the second uh, modified equation together to create a linear combination, the x is cancel. Seven y minus six y is y equals negative two. Y equals negative two. In triangle JKL, cosine this equals this and this. What's the value of cosine L? So let's draw our right triangle. So if cosine of k, let's say this is k, is gonna be adjacent over hypotenuse. So adjacent is 24 over hypotenuse is 51. Realize that 24 is three times eight. Realize that 51 is three times 17. So that means that this is a actually an eight, 15, 17 right triangle. So this side is gonna be three times 15 for 45. So when they're now asking what's the, J is the right angle, what's the value of cosine of L? Cosine again is adjacent over hypotenuse. So that's gonna be equal to 45 over 51, which is equal to 15 over 17. We simplify it. The given equation defines this, for what value of x does f of x reach its minimum? So we need to find the x value of the vertex here. The x value of the vertex is given by negative b over 2a in a parabola. That's gonna be equal to negative negative 50 over two times four. So that's gonna be equal to positive 50 over eight or 25 over four. The xy equation, plane line L pass through point zero, zero, has a y intercept of zero and parallel to the line. So line L is parallel to this line. That means that we know line L has a slope of eight. Same slopes, parallel lines. And we know the y-intercept is zero. So we know line L is eight X. If line L passes through the point also, three D, so D equals eight times three. So that means that D equals 24. What's the value of D? The XY plane aligned with equation two Y equals C for some constant C intersects a parabola at exactly one point. So this is the line Y equals C over two where C is a constant. So that's the horizontal line. Y equals some number is just a horizontal line. The only time a horizontal line and a parabola can intersect once is when that line horizontally intersects the parabola at its vertex. So we need to find the Y value of the vertex then plug it in here to find C. So the Y value of the vertex, we start with the X value. The X value of the vertex is gonna be equal to negative B over two A. So negative nine over two times negative two. So that's gonna be equal to nine over four. That's our Y value. Uh, that's our x value of the vertex. We have to plug it back into the equation to find the y value. So that's gonna be negative two times um, nine over four squared, which is really gonna be equal to 81 over 16, uh, plus nine times nine over four, so that's 81 over four. So this is then gonna be equal to um, minus 81 over eight, plus 81 over four. Make this uh, base two, multiply top and bottom by two. So it's gonna be, um, 162 over eight, negative 81 over eight plus 162 over eight is gonna be equal to 81 over eight. That's our Y value of our vertex, that's not, that's not our answer. So if Y is gonna be equal to uh, 81 over eight or two times 81 over eight is gonna be equal to C, then C is gonna be equal to 81 over four. So that's gonna be our answer. That's what C is equal to.